Hi, in this lecture, I'm going to talk about stochastic gradient descent. So recall gradient descent, which was the optimization algorithm that we decided on for optimizing all our training losses for classification and regression. So recall that the training loss is an average over all the examples in the training set of the per example losses. So gradient descent works as follows. We're going to initialize the weight vector to zero, and then we're going to repeat t times and do the following update. We're going to take the old weight vector and subtract out the step size times the gradient over the training loss. And now this looks very simple, but if you unpack what this gradient is, it's actually an average over the gradients of the per example losses. So now imagine you have a data set with a million examples. Computing the single gradient is going to involve looping over all a million examples just to get a single update. And then you take a step, and then you have to do it all over again. So this is why gradient descent is slow, because it requires going through all the training examples just to make one update. So what can we do about this? So the answer is stochastic gradient descent. So here is the same training loss function. And stochastic gradient descent is going to work as follows. So we initialize the weight vectors to 0. And then we iterate t times. And now on each epoch, we're going to loop over the training examples and then perform an update on the individual losses. Okay, so here, instead of going through the training set and performing one update, we're going to go through the training set and after each example, we're going to perform an update. And this is going to be a lot faster in terms of having the number of updates be large. Of course, there is a trade-off because each update itself is not going to be as high quality because it's only it consists of one example as opposed to all of the examples. And that's it for stochastic gradient descent. I want to talk about one small note, which is the step size. So recall the update is I includes a step size which determines how far in the direction of the gradient or away from the gradient do you want to move. Okay, so what should a to b? And in general, there's not really a one satisfying answer to this. And it's usually a hyperparameter that has to be tuned via trial and error. But here's some general guidance here. So the step size has to be greater or equal to zero. And if it is small, that means you're taking little, little steps. But that means your algorithm is going to be more stable and less likely to bounce around. And as you increase a to larger and larger, then you're taking more aggressive steps. So you can move faster, but perhaps at the risk of being a bit more unstable. So two typical strategies for setting the step size. One is using a, just a constant step size. We've used so far a to equals 0 0.1, kind of an arbitrary number. Um, or you can do a decreasing step size rate, where a to is 1 over the number of updates that you've made. And the intuition here is that in the beginning, you're far away from the optimum, so you're going to move quickly. You want to move quickly. But as soon as you start uh, getting close to optimum, you want to slow down. So now let us explore stochastic gradient descent um, in Python. I'm going to code it up and uh, see you know, what happens. So remember last time we did gradient descent. So I'm going to copy this code over. Descent hinge, uh, sorry, descent stochastic gradient descent. Um, and what we're going to do is modify this code to make it uh, do stochastic gradient descent. Okay, so just recall last time we set up some training examples. Uh, we defined the loss function. And then we had this generic optimization algorithm. So now to really tell the difference between gradient descent and stochastic gradient descent, 
I'm going to make a larger data set. And I'm going to do it in a way so that it's large, but it's structured so we know what the right answer is. Because otherwise, how can we verify that it did the right thing? To do this, uh, this is kind of a just a general trick, is that you kind of uh, generate synthetic data from kind of a ground truth, and then you try to recover that ground truth. So, so suppose we had some true away vector. Um, this is our secret code, which is unknown to the learning algorithm, but we hope that the learning algorithm will recover this. And then we're going to define a function called generate, which uh, uses this true w to generate an example. So here I'm going to generate x, um, and I'm going to just sample randomly um, a five-dimensional uh, wave vector. Oh, sorry, uh, uh, an input point. And then I'm going to set y to be true w dot x. So true, the examples I'm going to generate are generated from the true wave vector. And then I'm just going to add some noise. It ran n. OK? And then I'm going to set the training examples to be just generate uh, for, uh, let's say, one, let's do one million examples. Uh, that's a lot of examples. All right, so let's see what this data looks like. So I'm going to print out x and y. Um, and just to see what is coming out. Oops, um, I had a typo here. OK, so here is the data set that we are going to train on. So example, x is a five-dimensional vector, and the output is a scalar. So there are a lot of examples here. Okay. All right, so I need to update the feature vector um, to be just x, the identity. And here I'm going to, the initial wave vector has to match the dimensionality of the, of the true wave vector. And then everything else, the training loss and gradient, are I'm going to leave alone. Okay. So now let's uh, uncomment this line. Um, and let's run gradient descent. Let's see what happens here. Okay, so it's going to generate the data. And now to compute a single gradient, it has to enumerate over 1 million examples. So this is going to be quite slow. Oh, it finished the first epoch, and uh, it has some, some values. So, and then the second epoch, um, and it seems like it's making some progress. Uh, remember, we want to see if this can hit 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Um, the loss is going down, which is good. And it seems like it's moving in the right direction, but um, it's, it's pretty slow, and I'm just, just going to stop it there because I don't want to wait forever. OK, so now let's do stochastic gradient descent. So uh, first, I need to change the interface, because gradient descent only had access to f and the gradient of f. And now stochastic gradient descent needs to access individual losses. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to define a stochastic uh, or actually, I just call this the loss of w. Um, I'm going to use i here to denote um, an index into one of these terms in the sum. So what the loss is going to be is it's just going to be one of these um, terms. And the term I'm going to select out is just the i data point. Okay, And similarly, the, the gradient of the loss is going to be just uh, the gradient, but for the ith uh, data point. And this also takes in the index i. So now if I feed in i for various values, I can access the loss and the gradient of that loss function for any given weight vector. All right, so, so now let's go over to the optimization algorithm and let me do stochastic gradient descent. Okay, so I'm going to call this uh, stochastic gradient descent. 
And I'm going to call this uh, just to distinguish things. I'm going to use lowercase f um, for like individual components of an objective function. Okay, so I'm going to initialize a wave vector. Um, I'm going to uh, use a different step size here just for fun. Um, I'm going to initialize with one. Um, actually, let me do this instead. Um, I'm going to set the step size to be one over the square root of uh, number of updates. And each time I do an update, um, I'm going to inc in, uh, increase the number of updates. So actually, let me do it in this order. Okay, so number of updates is, starts at zero. Um, and then, uh, remember in stochastic gradient descent, I'm going to um, loop over um, the number of components of the objective function. So one, zero to n minus one. So another thing I'm gonna to have to pass in is the number of components that I'm going to use to index into f. And so now this is f of wi, gradient f of wi. And then I'm going to move everything inward. OK? So now to call this function, I'm going to run stochastic gradient descent. And with just the, the loss and the, the gradient of the loss, um, I'm going to pass an n, which is a number of training examples and initial weight vector. Okay, so let's just review what's going on here. So stochastic gradient descent takes uh, a function which can access individual components of the objective, it initializes the weights, and then uh, iterates some number of times. And in each epoch, it's going to uh, in loop over all the examples, compute the value, compute the gradient, and then it's going to um, do a gradient update. And here I'm using the step size, which is one over the number of updates that it made so far. Okay, so let's see um, stochastic gradient descent in action now. Uh, I have two returns here, so that is a syntax error. Let me fix that. Um, so now it's going through 1 million examples. Oh, I need to uh, import math as well. Um, so it's going to loop over 1 million examples. But each example, it's going to perform an update. And so when it prints out, it's going to have already taken 1 million steps of stochastic gradient descent. And look at what happened here. So after the first step, it's already quite close to one, two, three, four, five. And the objective, uh, and the, I guess the function value doesn't really mean as much because it's only of an individual point, but you can see that the weight vector is converging you know, quite nicely. And this shows that stochastic gradient descent, just even sometimes with one pass of a training data can get uh, much closer to the optimum than if you were to do um, many, many rounds of gradient descent. Okay, so that was a stochastic gradient descent in Python. So let's summarize here. So we want to optimize this training loss, which is an average over the per example losses. And we looked at gradient descent, which takes a step on the gradient of the training loss. And we also looked at stochastic gradient descent, which picked up individual examples and updated it on computing after computing the gradient of individual examples. And now we, on this example, we've shown that stochastic gradient descent wins. And the key idea behind stochastic updates is that it's not about quality, it's about quantity. So maybe not a general life lesson, but it seems like in this case, it is more wise to keep in mind what you're trying to do, which is optimize this objective rather than compute the gradient, which is only a means to an end. Okay, so that concludes the module on stochastic gradient descent. Thanks for listening.